Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ion Icon. And with me is Digital Dave. How are you today, Digital Hello. Dave? I am fine. I'm doing great. How are you? How have you been? <laughs> I'm great. And and just that intro was for Jack. Jack has been constantly <laughs> tweeting that he's waiting for a unique way for me to say you in the podcast. You know, how I used to say Icon Grapher. And, he wants uh, you to butcher it. Yeah, d- totally. Exactly. So that's what I was, I was doing. I didn't tell you pre-show. I, I thought I'd surprise you with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that it happened. <laughs> oh, good, good. So, David, how's the week been? Um, it's been good. Uh, lots of stuff uh, happening. Lots of stuff kind of accumulating in uh, in the current week. I thought last week was going to be much, you know, busier with the activities for us uh, on chain, mm. uh, minting some NFTs left and right, seeing some development um, left and right. But it turns out it's actually this week with the highlight of today being um, the cross chain wonder game NFT mint to Harmony blockchain. So yeah, I can't bridge, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's finally happening. The day has arrived. Well, until we see the first cross-chain mint, indeed, indeed, I think uh, at time of recording, it's it's two hours. It's in, it's in about two hours. Is it in two um, hours? Okay, okay. We yeah, don't know that. now what what we'll know in two hours. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that 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 it's that's gonna happen. It's actually gonna happen. Yep, yep. It's gonna happen. Look, uh, small weekly news update. I I think. You and me, David, we say it'll be a quick one. It never ends up. Probably today, I'm betting. I'm willing to put some money on it. It's going to be a quick one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, first of all, I'm going to make it a point to keep shouting out at the start of the episode. Thank you again, Donny, pulling everything together for us for our weekly news. Continues to do that. Um, and we're very grateful and appreciate it. Um, the next thing I wanted to quickly call out. So, sorry, I've been slack around this now. You know, we did the 100th episode. It was a fun episode, live stream. And um, uh, Icon Graph actually made this NFT. So, we're just, uh, he's created this video collectible. It is just for fun. Okay. If you people like the show and you want to show support, jump on. We'll have this. David, let's make sure we remember to put this in the show notes. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll have the link for the Iron Icon NFT. There are 30 ICX. There's 20 of them. Uh, could it be utility later? Maybe. Maybe not. Haven't haven't given that too much thought. It's more you're a fan of the show. You want something to collect. That is literally the 100th episode. We did 100 episodes. Actually, David, what are we on now? 118 now. So, um, what, what, what I do promise is if we get to 200, there will be a 200 badge to collect as well. So, um, and then if we get to 300, there'll be a 300. And as you can see, that's where the value comes from. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Look, it's a bit of fun. Okay, everyone. Um, but yeah, I did say we'd do it and uh, better late than never. I can see a few people have picked up on it and gone and picked some up after I tweeted it out, but enough of a shameless plug from me. Let's dive into the weekly news. Uh, David, stop, stop, stop going to buy all of them right now. Stop it. 17 left. (laughs) Not for long. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Look, weekly news. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I told you it's going to be a short episode. Reason being literally just recorded an awesome episode around TA macro environment uh, with Bearish Bull presenting uh, a wide... uh, a long-term view of what's going to happen, what's been happening in the markets and what he believes may transpire. And then we had Yasso, on-chain guru, who who then broke down some basic fundamental on-chain things he looks at to determine what is exactly happening, especially with Bitcoin. And um, if you haven't watched it, seriously, it's something I haven't put this on all the podcasting platforms intentionally. It is a very video episode. You, you, you kind of, they're sharing their screens, they're showing charts, they're referencing, listening to it on the actual, you know, like Spotify or anything. It, it, I don't think it would actually make a lot of sense. So apologies if people have been waiting on that front to see it, but I, I won't publish it there for that reason. Uh, definitely one to watch on YouTube. Even if you don't know crap about on-chain and TA, If you follow along, I think it'll help with a lot of perspective, give you a lot of perspective because there's a lot of, if you're looking at my screen right now, you know, they cross reference a lot of the past as, as with how TA works. You look in the past to determine where you're going to find your trends and support and et cetera. Um, So bearish bull in his analysis really looked at 
that and, and past cycles and and then compared it to what's happening this cycle um and you know really really brought home the fact that we've been in a bear market since when was it november 21 yes i think so from memory yeah so we, we've been in a bear market for a while people David, you're silence. Oh, wait, you're buying all the NFTs, aren't you? Let me quickly check. No. Nearly it's there. still there, people. And it's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like that episode um, with the guys explaining uh, what it is they do with regards to TA uh, and on-chain metrics. It gives a bit of um, e uh, is ease the right word? It's nice to hear someone explain what is happening and give it some substance yeah. by, you know, kind of pointing at stuff. And look, it I don't know if it's the power of hindsight that you, you know that you can easily say um, yeah. this happened, that happened, and this is why. But it makes sense, and uh, therefore it's nice. It's definitely a video I'd watch, and um, another video that you should pop in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Look, and, and this is this raises a good point. What David called out, like it. it when you watch the video, you'll see yeah. So from an on-chain perspective, uh, he he shows in the past uh, like month what instigated these drops and he correlated it to the on-chain data where uh, large inflows but constant large inflows hit above the 1600 if i recall correctly btc mark now uh where he pointed this obviously before the drop that happened today he called out he goes now if you look at the same period you don't see that kind of activity happening with this pump at the moment and he was very clear at the moment but obviously uh, finished recording a day has passed and if you actually go into the TA club you'll see the moment it happened he actually posted he goes guys huge deposits inflows coming into these exchanges which then uh, he called that if this happened we would see a bit of a reversal and this is what's kind of played out so it's very much um, looking at the past and, and yeah David you're right like it, it's all about looking at the past and going okay this is what happened here and this is what happened on chain and this is why then kind mm. of putting together an argument, this is why it happened, because we can see consistently um, yeah. in the past. Yeah. Be because to, um, but, but what, what he, what they're saying with the inflows to the exchanges, what the inflow of Bitcoin, for example, like a lots of Bitcoin to exchanges from away from private wallets, it, it kind of symbolizes the intention to sell. Mm. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's not someone who has a lot of Bitcoin and is just moving it to an exchange only to bring it back panic. to the wallet again. So because it's panic. just, yeah, you make <laughs> assumptions based on this behavior. Yeah. But it's, I think, with all of this stuff, it's better than nothing. Yeah. You know, you yeah. need some sort of like guide, and I'd say probably like most of the time, when funds get sent from a private wallet to an exchange, they get traded or sold like that's just like it's not a crazy assumption is it so no. um i like that part about on chain it, it shows you you know it shows you that if those assumptions are correct um you can look into the future a wee bit you can just yeah. uh, kind of uh, if, manage if you see the same activity right so if, if mm. you see the, well these four buckets this is what happened and all of a sudden you're seeing the same kind of activity play out in real time uh, yeah well, you're going to be on your toes. But I mean, to your point, I've seen uh, in the past, whales have messed with this kind of data by just starting to move a ton of BTC around and causing a panic, but not actually panicking in their favor. Um, but look, again, great episode. And um, <laughs> again, not just blowing my R in the shows, <laughs> you know, but it, it was insightful. Um, I, I really learned a lot as well. Even um, Bearish Bulls, some of the stuff he was saying and what was awesome about it, November. November, people. If you want to know, David, don't say what because if you haven't listened, you got to go listen to it. November. I know. Yeah. I know. He knows. He knows while he's swooping up all these NFTs. Okay. <laughs> Let's let's get into the news, David. Let's get into the news. So, um, first things first, we have a bit of a update where we saw uh, the Ice and Snow handle tweet out about launching a DEX on the Ice blockchain. I believe this particular article is showing how one would do it. If you yeah. haven't already, make sure you take a look at this. So, this is just encouraging devs to to look at how easy it is to build. But then yeah. as if on queue, we've had someone actually announce a de DEX to launch on Snow. 
And this is the Stakey team, because I saw uh, a post by uh, Lucas uh, from the Stakey team. Who, yes. This is the team that spends probably uh, 90% of their time working on Craft Network, because that's just such a massive uh, project with growth potential. But the Stakey team um, on the side has announced this Everest swap. It's a decentralized exchange that will be on ICE. And I think the takeaway or the news takeaway here is because the ICE network is EVM compatible, this means that you can port over Solidity code. Mm -hmm. Solidity code being the language that all Ethereum dApps are written in. This has happened before. Um, you've got the massive Uniswap on Ethereum. It's mm -hmm. the biggest decentralized exchange in the world. The other biggest decentralized exchange on Binance Smart Chain is PancakeSwap. Now mm. that is a direct fork, a copy, Solidity code ported over to Binance Smart Chain. And what this is showing is that ICE Network will have that same um, capability. So it's going to be quite easy to get you know out of the box working DEXs and other protocols running on ICE network. It's going to be exciting to see the growth there because it might be able to grow probably 10 times as fast as you know dApps that have to be hand hand coded in Java on the ICON network. Yeah. So that ICE that 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 Arctic testnet that's currently up and running uh, could see a lot of action uh, with regards to ported or um yeah transferred uh, dApps and and such. Yep, look I think what I was taken back on, I saw a lot of comments of people going, oh, why are you doing that? We have balanced. Um, uh, I'm going to newsflash to everyone. Like, this is not going to be the one DEX. Uh, I actually have got r rumblings based. I didn't even know about this DEX. I believe there's another DEX. And I think there's a third DEX um, that I've heard about being being built strictly for snow and then another few for ice as well. But then if you listen to what David just said, like one inch sushi swap, they literally deployed on all these different um, EVM chains. And uh, it, it's a matter of, they've got the code. They literally just deploy on chain and they're good to go. So uh yeah, balance. No, it's not going to be like that. And and we want this. This is great. This is what's meant to be happening. Uh, and yeah, I, I just I just thought I saw a lot of people, and it was like, no, 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 it's it's not going to work that way. Uh, and you can't stop. Uh, what I've noticed is the dex is always the first thing. That's one of the easiest things for people to keep deploying on on any new chain. And uh, there's no tokens, but <laughs> dexes deploy. Rest assured. So uh, look at the start. It's good. Um, let's hope. Again, now they start to utilize BTP and things like that, but time will tell. I think we'll have a few more announcements about DEXs. Uh, I've just heard rumbling. So this one came out of left field, unless this is the same DEX I've heard rumblings about for another DEX, but um, time will tell. Next, IconFi. Oh, look, little, little news. IconFi opened a Reddit community. Great, great to see. Uh, I think IconFi is great because it can give exposure to a whole different user base uh, you don't have to be you don't want to be well you're not going to be pitching icon fire to us dgen yielders not interested personally but um someone who just wants no friction email sign up don't have to worry about seed trade custody and stuff like that icon fire should be the go-to app so great to see them expanding their community Anything to add, David? No, like you said, I'm happy that um, they're putting in the effort to be a presence on Reddit as the crowd there is different. Mm. And yes, there's a large crypto following. They're in certain groups, but there's also a lot of people who are into banking, who are into other ways of um, looking for yield. And then they could be this, you know, Icon Five making the effort could be the perfect on ramp for people who are previously not in crypto to come in and actually come in on Icon. So yeah, happy with that. Mm. Good, good. Okay. Oh, a favorite DAP, Folligator. Folligator. Ah, oh, so what have they done? They've released uh, some more stuff. Overview of open positions, individual pool performance. My goodness, I have zero in permanent loss. But I haven't gone and looked at this. Have you checked out this update, David? I have gone in um, to have a look. I couldn't establish what was new and what had already been there prior and because my usage of the Folligator app is limited to um, whenever I want to make 
a move or you know what you know how you can you can lay in bed mulling over a new strategy mm. with your portfolio on icon just thinking about hey but what if i did this or this pool is coming up it's going to be heavily incentivized what if i would take some here move it over there that's the moments that i would go to folligator and use the yield planner and check out like liquidity pools and whatnot um it just so happens with the current market like the way everything is like I'm not making any moves and I haven't made any moves for, for a long while, to be honest. Yeah. Therefore, I haven't been logging into Folligator to use this fantastic product as much. Um, so I went in, I couldn't really establish what, what's this latest update, what's been added and what, what had already been there prior. So I wouldn't dare say, I wouldn't dare pinpoint one of those and say, this is the one you want. So I would basically <laughs> urge anyone, if you're going to make, if you're going to make a move, just pre-plan your move in Folligator. Just have a look to see what, what what yield could you be earning, you know, with the risk that you want to be taking, because they give you all the data to make good decisions like that. So that's what Folligator does. Yeah, totally. Uh, I still feel this is an extremely undervalued. Like I know in the other ecosystems I've gone looking, I've never found something that tells me so directly what's going on. It's remember, David, I shared with you some. I'll even that it, it you, you needed some diploma and something to be able to read what they're trying to tell you um and then these an, 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 yeah an impermanent loss calculator you shared with me um <laughs> it's baked into folligator here and folligator was designed to it, it's be, been funded by the balanced dao um, fund so it's, it's funded by balanced to work with balanced and as these as these developers you know continue um you know, who, who knows, they might start porting in uh, other platforms and all these new DEXs that we're talking about and all these other, mm. <laughs> other things as well. But the functionality is based around balance right now, and it's really good. It helps you make informed decisions there. Yep, love it. Okay, keep up the great work, team. Uh, next up, Studio Mirai. Oh, okay, they've kicked off a new event, June 10th. It is a cross-community poker tournament. Uh, it really awesome work by the guys there. From what I understand, it one of the guys who won uh, the last tournament is part of this other community on Solana. So this is this is really cool. This is awesome. Like we're already seeing the Harmony community come across thanks to Wonder Game, and uh, this is now uh, something else uh, from another chain. Given Solana just seems to randomly pause or halt this is this is the new norm in blockchain world but um let, let's let's have a dig in a moment um this this is great great to see studio Mario constantly putting this up kataro himself yeah. um pushing this and it's a lot of hard work that he does in the background it's not just rocks up to commentating um and does a excellent job there but it's all the background work that he does that i, I don't know if um people realize just how hard it is and how much he does. So this is sensational. Shout out. And this is a, a poker tournament collaboration with a with a Solana NFT project. They they have a Discord with over two thousand uh, members in there, um, which is about four times as big four times as big as as Tamashi themselves are. So you could definitely say uh, Studio Mirai there is shooting for the stars. Uh, they're yeah. making they're making a lot of big friends, uh, and it's a really really good way of getting to know other communities, seeing what it is. Like I had never heard of Bultiverse. By now, I've already been to their website. I've checked out their their collections and whatnot. I've not been on Solana much because I always um, rock up after closing time, but. <laughs> uh, once I get a chance, um, you know, <laughs> I know that Bultiverse will be my, my go-to uh, project when I go and explore that blockchain. So, oh, whoa, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, def. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I must spend some time on it. Awesome. I hadn't looked at it, so um, yeah, this is pretty Just cool. be careful around the holidays. I think they, uh, you know, they close for a long weekend. And yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> they need some downtime to, you know... Uh, make sure those tps pipes are fully ventilated uh okay enough enough of that Let, let's let's keep shall, shall we dedicate a moment to it like what's the deal is this the norm like uh, i don't even know why it happens so we're talking about the solana blockchain being down where the essence of blockchain from the bitcoin philosophy is to always be up i have a full bitcoin node running here um you which is 
It's one of oh, it, it doesn't actually earn any money. It does nothing. It's a Raspberry <laughs> Pi. It's a little Raspberry Pi computer with um, the right uh, software on it, and it's one of fifteen thousand full full Bitcoin nodes out there. So if they uh, manage to shoot off fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine, there's still one running in the cupboard here. Yeah. Um, keeping the entire blockchain <laughs> keeping up with the entire blockchain so the story is you know these these things aren't supposed to come down they're supposed to be up because there's nodes all over the world running that that software and this doesn't i'm not saying there's miners they don't all validate transactions and earn money but they just keep the network up they 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 secure the network yeah so um what's happening with solana that their network comes down like once, twice, or three times a month altogether. Uh, I don't know either, but people joke about it because it's not supposed to happen, and because Solana is, you know, has has lots of, lots of um, venture capitalist funding as well. People joke that it, you know you're basically walking in with Solana. You're basically walking into a, a, a business uh, like you would um, in, in in the shopping mall. <laughs> it's not it's not a decentralized thing. People people say and people joke about. Like I don't know the nitty gritty because I haven't gone into to research it at all. But that's why we are joking about it as well, mm. um, saying that they close over 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 the weekend and over holidays. And that's just memes I've seen and they crack me up. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, in this case they halted it, David. It hasn't just magically stopped. They coordinatedly halted the chain. <laughs> In itself, that's a. Uh, I should have so, said so, that. So no one, when it's halted, no one can do transfers. No Nothing. one can um, interact with it. Y yeah. Your built diverse characters can't uh, do stuff. Yes, that is a problem. They should come to Icon. Um, but no, no, no. Look, we're connecting chains, and and look, excited about this event. Let's let's keep moving. And and David, I think did you say? I'm pretty sure you said. Did you say fifteen thousand nodes or your fifteen thousand Bitcoin? I said there is 15,000 full nodes got it, got it, got it. Okay. across the world. Come on, man. Buy some securing NFTs. the network. Get some iron icon NFTs with that 15,000 BTC. I wish. <laughs> okay, okay. Get, let's keep going. Uh, so, okay. What's this? Oh, the next tournament. So, 16-bit uh, Pi Club. So, a bit of NFT um, squish news. We're at the tail end of news. I warned everyone. It's a short episode. Uh 16-bit fight club they did postpone uh the rest of the drops that were left and now uh, coming back in the first tournament if you didn't know so obviously it's all um fight club retro gaming stuff like that and one of the ways um uh, they have been uh, giving away when i say they i mean oh, hello chocobo has created it uh, he wanted to capture you know the essence of of that era of gaming how you got excited go to the arcade or when these games came out you played them on your console so um he's been having tournaments and uh, everyone gets together and plays and whoever comes out right at the end wins a tournament gets the minting right so a couple of these have happened already and now we're going to see the next one on the 4th of june so if you didn't know about it get into 16-bit fight club register and you just take part in the tournament and the next one is model combat and um I, I i have a feeling for the final mint it looks like uh, the three games that were presented was mario kart and a few others and mario kart seems to be winning so that that that'll be that'll be a long one david like those mario kart races go for a while so everyone comes in and they play the game online is it in an emulator yes. or on a website uh, yeah so, and yeah. then the winner gets the mint yeah there's instructions on the discord it's this um uh, application is downloaded and it just does everything for you and then yeah off you go on the hosting night and it's mm. it's live streams and there's holo chocobo dishing out some commentary i join in from time to time sometimes jeff from frame gets in there so it's a solid aussie accent commentary session all right yeah. all right all right <laughs> cool so 16-bit fight club next up what do we have oh the big 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 one wonder game wonder game with three hours how many hours away are we now a one and a half hours away one of half. the first icon bridge use case connecting icon with harmony blockchain this is it this is it in fact it's when happening. you're listening to this it would have happened oh god it better yeah. be happening it some stuff bad stuff shouldn't have happened and everyone's listening to this and having a chuckle no no it will be good i i know for a fact 
Um, there's been a ton of testing in the background and this is probably one of the reasons why we've seen a few delays here and there. But And this is a learning curve as well. So the uh, Wonder Game team, you know, they're working closely with the people building the bridge itself and working on the, 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 the BTP that, that's going to come after. This is all learning curve and all the learnings are, are, t are taken along and so so next time there's there's another chain connected or whether there's a new dap mm -hmm. organizing something like all these hiccups and all these little like uh, speed bumps you know they're, they're just adding to what we know about this new technology mm -hmm. um so it's if this happens in one and a half hours which fingers crossed it does that is big and it might not look big because i can imagine people's experiences now they're going to go to this minting website they're going to connect their wallet you hit a button you sign a transaction and that's it right mm. so in terms like you're not you're not stepping into a roller coaster it's not it's not a 20 uh, 20 minute ride it's it might be even a bit underwhelming but please know that if it works it's big it's yeah. big and we're, and, we're, and we're moving this train is finally moving um so i'm just so excited for that to finally happen and then to see okay success let's look forward what's next like where are we going with this so so a bit of an inside scoop as well here uh, you know when we saw a bit of a delay and there was rpc errors and in case anyone was wondering one of the issues there that that led to a bit of a delay was it just so happened harmony was doing a huge chain upgrade and when that happened it it, it had a few issues with these RPC endpoints and that's where a bit of scrambling happened. So it, it's not a very usual circumstance and it wasn't, oh, you know, uh, it was just... But it happens, it happens. Exactly, exactly. So look, it's happening. Imagine connecting to Solana. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. Come back in a few days. <laughs> oh God, we could just keep doing that, couldn't we? Okay. Um, Next up, what have we got here? Uh, Gangster Bet. Gangster Bet. You know what? Our they're... front runners. Yes, and there's a ton, ton of news with Gangster Bet, but uh, this, this is I don't know if anyone's seen it. I got it on my screen. They showed a bit of a model of 3D Land. What does it say? Early work in progress. Uh, yeah, and I think what we're looking at here is um, uh, for 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 the people listening, it's it's essentially a little land plot like you would see in Sim City. Uh, back in the day or in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Mm -hmm. It's a little land plot and it's um, it's spinning around showing all angles. What, what I'm expecting is these little land plots, like we see on other blockchains, to show up in the marketplace. Oh. You know how other blockchains have metaverse projects and you can go in and you can buy land. Mm. Like that's that's... And isn't that exactly what the Gangsterverse is going to be like? Now, I don't want to raise any um, wrongful expectations, but they're building their Gangsterverse, um, and they're now showing us little plot, little spinning plots of lands. What, what my expectation is that sometime in the future, that little spinning plot of land is going to have a crown token denomination under it, and you can you can purchase that or not. And I'm not sure what the Metaverse experience is going to be like as a user. But I think that's what they're showing us right now. And at the same time, they're um, launching some news about their second golden key drop. So they've got these golden keys that is going to allow you to mint civilians. So if you hold gangsters, you can have two gangsters get together in a in in, in a room, lock it with this golden key that you will need, <laughs> and um, you know the funky stuff happens, and bang, you've just minted a generation zero civilian. And these civilians, um, they've already shown a sneak peek in the discord they look pretty cool yeah. and they're going to populate this metaverse as well so we're going to have civilians alongside gangsters which can be either detectives or um mobsters now they uh drop these golden keys to people who are either staking or voting for the gangster bet node um and they've dropped their first like they're only going to drop a certain amount 50 percent had already been dropped and divided they're being traded on craft network as we speak and the second batch uh they've just taken a snapshot again of, of voters and stakers and people who who are actively involved with gangster bet and i think this week they'll be um distributing those and it's kind of a raffle so you have to get get a bit lucky um but i think golden keys as it stands they're going for around a thousand icx 1200 icx because people want 
the chance to mint these civilians. I think they're speculating that because um, because bet themselves they say, hey, there's only going to be a certain amount of these golden keys. So people don't really know, like, is this going to be it? Is there going to be more? How valuable are these things? Yeah, yeah. It, look, I'm I'm I, I'm really interested to see the gameplay. Uh, and yeah, look, it's coming along. It's turned bigger than Benner. Uh, so uh, love it. The one of the other things just to call out in case you didn't catch it. So, you know, at the moment they have their own node and you own, if you provide liquidity or vote for their node, you own crown. They've, they've said that starting from July, you're still going to earn it, but the crown will get vested. Um, so just, just make sure you're aware of that. I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting something for free, so uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. It, it's probably smart on their part because the game's taking time. Uh, you don't want it to launch and the market opens up and everyone dumps. People are going to go into the quick buck for something they got for free. So um, this way, at least it stops that, but I'm sure they'll, they'll launch some kind of insane utility that uh, you you don't want to give up your crown token or sell it. So exciting times. It's coming along. What else? Oh, look, I just wanted to, this is it. We just wanted to end the show on uh, not the least one, a Yeti strong club. We've talked about this. Uh, their team have been uh, giveaways and all kinds of stuff going on. AMA is every second day in their discord. The Yetis, everyone seems to have a Yeti in their profile pic at the moment. We can see close to 2,000 have almost sold out. And these are, you know, these are just, they haven't gone, um, not having a dig, but they haven't gone asking whales to buy and lock up. None of that stuff. It is strictly organic, everyone finding out and, and coming in and minting a Yeti. Now, I, I've minted a ton. I plan on minting a ton more. I don't know why. I want to wait till the later stages in case I get, I know they're completely random, but I just, I don't know. I have this feeling I want to mint later and see what happens. It's interesting to see the minting going yeah. like gradually, linearly. Mm. I wonder if it if it keeps up like this. It's a testament to the project and their efforts in, in you know, spreading the word of the Yeti. We haven't had a lot of experience with 10K mints. We literally had our first one last week or two weeks ago with Claws. Mm. They really pushed to sell out so that's where they incentivized like larger buyers to come in and, and buy great batches and, and everyone was kind of involved and they look great uh fun times but that was our first 10k mint and i feel like this is our second 10k mint i i have no more experience with these i'd say what 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 what's common what what happens with these because you would say like if it doesn't sell out is it still a success or can you wait um uh, a while for it uh, to sell out and is that actually better because you're the the yeti strom club uh, people say hey what we what we have is about like nearly 20 percent sold out but what we're also seeing is the community is large like mm. there's a lot of holders and that's something valuable mm. so if you can just you know get that across your entire 10k even if it takes you six months to reach that number you can have a massive community so that would be a very good thing right there so yeah. it's interesting to see these different mechanics playing around these 10k mints because uh maybe at first you would look at it and say hey this hasn't sold out within a week so not good but i know the i've read the white paper i've done a big thread on the white paper mm. and what what the framed project encapsulating this particular collection is about and when you read all that and you understand what they're trying to do here you can see all this value and you're like, I don't even care if this particular collection sells out mm. because I'm going to be a part of the larger framed ecosystem anyway. I, I think um, this is this is the biggest point. Like people need to realize, and this is why I'm very bullish here, the Yeti Strong Club, one of the things they, they keep reminding is anything that launches that the frame team does, if you own a Yeti, you're on the whitelist for point one. Like, yeah, forget. So automatic guaranteed whitelist. Two, you're getting framed the token. Now, there's big plans with that. We've seen, uh, had an episode in there with them on talk about how the frame token works. But what starts to add value is things that we can't, haven't even thought about or they haven't even spoken about. But you can start picturing. For example, the Yeti Strong Collection could use the frame token for something. It could use it for 
upgrades could use it for i don't know I, uh, they haven't told me i'm just i'm just painting a picture the fact that this is there the token framed could be utilized there it, as more collections join they're staking the resell the way the sales model works for any partnerships they actually go into the treasury which pays out the frame stakers so again it the potential for frame isn't just in their collections it's in their partnerships as well so uh, and finally i have heard you know their trading card game that they're building well i haven't heard i have seen pictures in fact we've seen andrew drop some alpha around it as well they look sick and uh, i have heard rumblings of a certain privileged batch of yetis may play a part in that as well so uh but don't don't quote me i've just heard uh, on the rumor vine i hear a lot of rumors these days i heard a rumor solana was going to be halted but i didn't believe it <laughs> that came <laughs> that turned out to be true <laughs> sorry sorry couldn't help it um okay I've, I've got i've got one um uh analogy left that might uh explain the relationship between this yeti strong club collection and the uh, the framed project better mm. so you know how you've got these big massive shopping malls these westfield shopping malls or anywhere in the world shopping malls maybe you could see framed as a very large shopping mall and all the stores inside are different nft projects mm -hmm. and the yeti strong club is the very first store you know to launch within that big shopping mall so if you buy yeti strong club um nfts you're going to get the nft but you're also going to get the shopping mall token which is the framed token yeah and framed the shopping mall here helps the collections launch it, it provides them with infrastructure it helps them um with yeah basically the, the, the story is like if you're going to launch an nft project you're probably an artist you're not a web developer you're mm -hmm. not a blockchain developer so what framed the shopping mall does is hey guys i've got a bunch of stores here you guys come in with your collections and i'll basically host the infrastructure for you to launch this and therefore you could say hey I like the idea of framed the big shopping mall. I'm not particularly a fan of the Yetis, but I want to get that framed shopping mall token. So I'm going to buy these Yetis. Yeah. And you could also hold off and wait because there's more collections that will come through that will have the same mechanics uh, um, as well. And I think but, there's a... But see, this, yeah. is the de uh, this is the thing, David. If you wait, you may not get on the whitelist for these future collections. Like... You know, as soon as you got to start thinking, the community starts growing. I know we're thinking bear market, but but take a moment. Uh, one thing we haven't um, publicized today is, do you realize that on the Icon Discord, we have a Harmony community and a Binance Smart Chain community now. And the Harmony community is growing day by day because people are starting to get excited about dun, da, da, dun, <laughs> Icon Bridge launching and the Wonder Game sale. So, uh, you know, as time goes on uh, and... and uh, the last point, David, which you were really saying, and I cut you off, but one th thought that came to my mind as well with the Yeti Strong Club, it, they're not trying to get everyone to scoop up so they sell out their collection. What's the point of their future collections having the same 50 people as a whitelist? It, it is more beneficial for them to make sure the collection spreads wide and far because then they have a they will have a big user base for future collections and partnerships. Partners come in. Well, you know, this is kind of our, our ownership portfolio. After 10,000, we've got 8,000 different people owning. This is kind of the base you're walking into when you launch a project with Frame. Oh, I'm getting more bullish as I talk about it. David, send me some money. <laughs> send me some uh, 500 BTC sound... will do well, for your 15,000. <laughs> you sound very bullish at the moment. <laughs> it's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> what bear market but but one thing i do want to call out the success of frame is very much dependent on the community rallying behind it and why because if you look at the white paper and stuff a lot of their initial bootstrapping period for frame revolves as well on the node the node that is set up which is set up and designed to distribute it its rewards into the framed ecosystem in the form of liquidity pool building that liquidity so you don't have to yourself go and put in liquidity or be you know um during market upwards or downtrends anyone pulling out liquidity one the node rewards um so in that case for the success of it 
as well revolves around partial around the success of the node and the community really rallying behind it and voting and of course they're going to get uh, rewarded for those votes but um it, again though they built the model because they really believe the community will will get behind it because it's all for the community everything they're doing in terms of their tokenomics is designed to just give back to uh, the teams partnering the teams building and the community who are holding the nfts that is I know I've crapped on a lot, but this is something me and Andrew, when I was talking to him, I was going back and forth about something and Andrew always came back to say that everything we're doing with Frame is all about the holders, who people who are spending and buying the NFTs. Without them, we wouldn't have anything and our entire model revolves around them. So we want to make sure that if they're buying a framed NFT, you know, there's certain mechanics in play that always is securing them uh, some kind of income from ho holding the token, but there's incentives when people, when they go and sell, you know, if someone will go and look at the frame collection in the resale market and understand its value prop versus just a random NFT that's, you know, um, yeah, enough there, David. I, I broke your train of thought, didn't I? No, it's fine. It's fine. I was, I was, <laughs> I was getting lost in my shopping mall analogy. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> looking for the exit. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> uh, I was a um, fireman that ran in and go fire. <laughs> no. yeah. um, okay, cool. Look, I think that that's a decent plug for Yeti. No, they're not paying us. No, it, it, it genuinely excited about some of the stuff they're doing there. So. That's it. That's all I have, David. Any closing words? Um, no, we've got uh, an hour and 13 minutes left until the launch of Icon Bridge through the Oof. Wonder Game use case. So, um, yeah. yeah, let's get ready for that. How much BTC are you putting aside for that? Uh, I'm thinking 70, 70 to 75. Yeah, damn just... You, uh, damn, good, good. Fat chance though. There's a whitelist, and you you know you you've had to be like um, engaging yeah. with them to yeah. get whitelist oh. spots. And I think the maximum whitelist spots amount is like eight. Is it? Oh wow. Oh, yeah. So okay. So wait. So uh, when it goes on sale, if I'm not on the whitelist, I can't go and buy. I just get a different not, rate. Not in one hour and thirteen minutes. Okay. You can, however. Um, uh, uh, tomorrow <laughs> okay okay uh, one day i can wait meanwhile david secretly ran behind to check on his btc stash and did you just discover oh my god no david your face is telling me it wasn't a btc node it was a bitcoin cash node oh no <laughs> 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 oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Kidding. Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> I'm sorry. The true man. vision of Shatoshi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, what's the other one? Bitcoin ABC? Oh, yes. Their solution oh. was to just keep increasing the block sizes. <laughs> I think they're on like a terabyte now. Oh. <laughs> okay, enough. Thank you, David. Yeah. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you. Um, Thank everyone you. listening, like, share, subscribe. Hopefully, you're still enjoying the content. If not, tell me to shut up if you are like subscribe you know share come on come on thank you everyone take care